Hello and welcome to Exchange for Media. The second wave of COVID-19, which appears to wane now, was clearly a much harsher one. This adversity taught us to stand with each other and for each other. We all together have weaved many stories of strength and resilience. In the weeks to come, we at Exchange for Media, in series of interviews with senior industry leaders, will make an attempt to understand the impact of this deadly wave on our lives and livelihoods. We will hear the stories of resilience. And to begin the series, I could not have had anyone better than Mr. Shashi Sinha, who is CEO IPG Media Brands. The CEO in Mr. Sinha's case stands for both the Chief Executive and the Chief Empathy Officer. Mr. Sinha, thank you so much for time, uh, finding time to speak to us. Thank you for the warm words. Thank you very much. So, sir, to uh, this 2020 was bad, but then 2021 was even worse. Uh, you know, the second wave uh, was more damaging in terms of personal loss and the overall sentiment. How much did it impact the ad industry, considering that there was a general sense of despair for over two months? So actually, you know, uh, as you called out, and thank you for the long words, but uh, actually the last 45 days to 60 days, we will focus more on our people than the business. I'll come to responding to your uh, question on uh, you know, because uh, this is time, as you correctly said, it's affected people and of course everywhere. So in our case also, we have had unfortunate situation where we have lost uh, three employees and we have lost about 20 plus family members, you know. So so it's a large uh, thing. So ensuring that people are taken care of, so that's been the focus. But to answer your specific question, uh, Jan, Feb, March was all right. April, when the pandemic started, because IPL was playing and this big investment of advertisers on IPL. So April was also reasonably all right, but May has been a collapse. So May, you know, uh, so last year May also was uh, uh, very bad, but uh, this time May has just fallen off. If you look at the moving average from Jan, Feb, March, April, May has just fallen off a cliff. And it's a plus categories, uh, combination of what is happening in the market lockdown and we put together that's what's happening. And I think June has started off also. Hopefully, it will improve with the lockdown restrictions and things. But I think May has really been the big Sir, so you've been, uh, uh, I, I heard that, you know, you there was a specific COVID team that was, uh, uh, you know, created in IPG. If you can tell us more about, you know, the initiatives that you as an agency took, you know, uh, Actually, I mean, just to keep the trust and hope of your colleagues alive. It's embarrassing, but what we did, because we realized, uh, you know, we are lucky that we're in the media-related business. We know all the media houses. Mm -hmm. And uh, the situation was that because work from home people, uh, we have a large backup team which does a lot of work for US called Kineso, you know. So those fellows were all over the country. They were, you know, there were 200 people. Plus our own team, about 1,100 people. So they were all over, you know, people in small town India. And this time the pandemic has hit small town India. And, you know, uh, people are having problems with hospitalization, getting beds, oxygen, you know, all, all of it. So I realized that, you know, uh, it's not enough because people were reaching out to HR. Every organization has large HR team and good quality HR teams, but that's not enough. You need senior management intervention. So we created this COVID team, which was in every city, senior managers, you know, and across it doesn't matter whether you're working for digital, offline or whatever. We nominated senior people who could uh, actually reach out to their media partners, media contacts and help in hospitalization, use the resources. And uh, I'm happy to say that, you know, I mean, there was a lot of tragedy, like I said, 25, 26 people have gone into their family members. But uh, having said that, uh, these teams reached out. They tried to ensure hospitalization. You know, it would come to me. I would get the report. I get report in the morning. I get a report in the evening. And uh, where they could not help, uh, we would step in some of our leaders. So I made it sure for all our leaders to be accountable and responsible. Uh, uh, that's what happened. IPG also had, they gave us some money because uh, this is the times when, you know, insurance is not enough. People are not giving bills. Everything was so expensive. So IPG also, we reached out to IPG. They created a fund for us, a COVID relief fund where money could be given without questions being asked. So I think all in all, it's just small, small things which we did, uh, which hopefully would have shown some some, uh, some support for our people. So uh, coming back to the business, you know, there's been a sense of despair and uncertainty. Uh, did it prompt many brands to suspend pitches, you know, simply or simply extended their contracts with the incumbent agencies? But then what, there is a challenge to add new business, right? So how did you tackle that? So I think uh, a lot of pitches have been paused. I don't know whether they will reopen or they will uh, go into, as you said, that they will extend contracts, uh, you know, 
Uh, I suspect uh, a lot of what you said will happen there. But you know, the great thing is uh, for us is you know being a global company and uh, uh, IPG that way is a very warm organization. So they have turned around and said to me, our global leader that and he has said to me, he said, this is, and this time the problem is only India specific, the other markets are not as badly affected. So they have said, you know, focus is on taking care of our people and ensuring people will come out of it. I mean, business is important because, but, uh, you know, it's not critical, it's a matter of life and death just now. And, you know, what, if I may add, what you know, happened, so while the cases are abated, you know, the cases have come down all over. At one point in time, we had 200 plus people and their uh, families affected, it's come down to about 30, 40 uh, or so now. But I worry about mental health issues. So, you know, I worry that uh, all kinds of things are there. So, you know, we have tried to create a uh, fence around people by ensuring you know, all kinds of things we have done. So I think to answer your question, uh, yes, this is a poor situation just now. But I think priorities in life are more important than business. So, you know, uh, just 45 days to 60 days. So obviously we'll have to get back to business. We'll have to get back to pitches. And some big pitches, global pitches are happening. It's not that they're not happening, you know. Uh, but uh, my sense is the priorities are different at this point. I wouldn't be too worried about what's happening, you know, pausing of pitches and uh, lack of new business in the market. It won't worry me. So, but uh, when I, uh, I I looked at the global results, you have still uh, done fairly well. You know, you uh, the, uh, in last quarter your uh, revenue increased by two point eight percent, and uh, your global CEO said that the company is positioned to deliver full year organic growth of five to six percent. Now, uh, what is India's role in this? And uh, these numbers, I think, were predicted before the second wave. So, you know, how much uh, is it affected now? So, so uh, IPG is a, a very strong America-centric company. Uh, America, as you see, the American economy has actually uh, bounced back, and uh, therefore they are doing a three percent to five percent growth, which are organic growth, are very good. Uh, so, IPG is doing extremely well. Uh, India has always been a high growth market for IPG. We are the few markets in the world where IPG is number two amongst all the companies. I'm not saying only because you were talking of IPG, not only media brands. You know, your research which you're talking about is IPG. So between McCann, Lindas, HB, and us, uh, it's a strong network in the country. It's a number two network, you know. So, so, uh, but interestingly, I mean, not only directly the media brand CEO, my boss, but also I was chat with Philip Gorowski, who's the IPG CEO, about 20 days back, the middle of May, uh, he spoke to me. I'm sure he spoke to other details, but he spoke to me, and it was a 45 minute call, and 30 minutes was in details and COVID and what we are doing. So I think they also come from a mindset that, uh, you know, India has been strong for them. This is the time to reach out to India. This is the time India needs help and support, both not only physically, psychologically. So I think they think they're so it's very premature to talk about numbers and how we will support IPG. But I'm reasonably sure that India will bounce back. The waves will come as vaccination increases. I mean, we have vaccinated all our staff. We have finished vaccination in Bombay, Delhi and uh, in Bangalore. Bombay, the last phase is tomorrow. So I think hopefully when people get vaccinated, you know, the country opens up in you know, the next two, three months. It will stabilize India's high growth market, not only as a market, but also for IPG. So we'll be back on track. But at this point in time, our mind is not on track. So you also uh, mentioned IPL uh, when you were answering the first question. So, you know, it is it is one of the big ticket events for most brands and it was called off midway. How much uh, and in what ways did it affect the overall industry business? So it did because IPL is a very poor start. Uh, for uh, the industry as well as for us, uh, we are very big. We have lots of clients with IPL. You know, we, we generally, my team and me believe in the power of IPL and cricket. So it did hurt us. And in May was a double whammy because uh, not only did IPL go off for the right reasons, in my opinion, but also the fact that all brands stopped advertising, you know, um, so it, it did affect. But the good news is IPL is coming back in September. It's coming back in festive. So the timing is right. If it happens in Dubai, the way it's planned, I think like last year, it'll, uh, last quarter was a jump start because of IPL. So mm -hmm. I suspect that will happen this time also. It will give us a good fillip. A lot of brands, I, I don't know about the whole world, but I can speak for myself. A lot of our clients have promised support. They say, you know, they will come back. Uh, in fact, some have promised enhanced support because it's festive. So IPL, as you know, sold out uh, before it started. So uh, hopefully, I think uh, IPL will have to drive the momentum and we we'll have the numbers in terms of viewership as it happened last time. So Dubai was closer games, you know, the many reasons why I think IPL will do well. So all in all, uh, we're hoping and praying that the cases abate. IPL happens, and if IPL happens, then it'll be a very good fillip to the first season. 
sir, um, which and which sectors do you think uh, suffered the most in the second wave? Actually, uh, you know, almost everything was uh, hit by from say twentieth April to now because e-commerce, which last time e-commerce did well for us, we have many e-commerce clients and the big ones. Uh, e-commerce uh, was affected because the government had closed down e-commerce and real estate commerce. Uh, obviously, the physical distribution companies also affected. So they had got a distribution act better this time, but yet they were affected, you know, because they, like you said, the intensity of the wave was so much that uh, when people were being, you know, so last time they were battling, like I remember Amul, the client which advertised very heavily last year. So they were battling uh, distribution issues last year, and they did a fabulous job of overcoming them. This year, there was so much of negativity around with people falling ill, deaths and all that. So I think consumption came down, but uh, I'm sure the CPG categories will bounce back faster. Uh, the uh, bureau goods and all, uh, auto and all, the mixed few. One view is personal mobility and all that will happen. But I also worry that consumer sentiment this time is going to be affected badly because, see, last time people have not seen it close. This time, it's a very sad thing to say, but people have seen it close. There's no one I know who's not seen, uh, you know, casualties in the extended family. Yeah. They've been, uh, I mean, all of us have gone through that. So that has left a psyche. And finally, consumption is all about psychology. So I hope and pray I'm wrong, but uh, I think this time is slightly more muted and slightly more longer, the effect will be longer. So we'll be careful. So I think a lot of high ticket consumption categories will take time to come back. You know, who would want to go on a holiday? Who would want to buy an expensive top and car uh, at this point in time? You know, we'll be careful. So this will revenge, also impact the revenge purchase season? will not happen. Sorry, sorry. This will also in long run impact the fest festive season. It will in certain categories. So you know, I personally feel. I mean, last time everyone talked about revenge purchase and revenge shopping and all that. I think that this time that will be people will be careful because jobs have gone. You know, the uncertainty. You don't know how long this will last. So you know, India doesn't have social security. It is a very large unorganized sector. So without social security, it's going to affect people. You know? so, so I'd be care careful. I wouldn't say I'd be uh, tense, but I'd be careful. I'd be worried. Not worried, but I'd be careful. So besides gaming and edutech, which are some of the new categories that have emerged as prominent advertisers in last one year in the post-COVID era? So if you go and look at IPL as a surrogate uh, for this, you know, you'll find entertainment as a very big entertainment has really taken off because Consumption of uh, entertainment has gone up dramatically in any form. You'll find that. Uh, gaming definitely. In India is in the tip of the iceberg of uh, being a big uh, possibility in gaming. And we've seen with our own clients, I mean, some of the gaming clients we worked with were very unhappy when IPL went off. They were extremely distressed about the situation. Edutech, yes, Edutech is there. It's a long haul game and they will sustain. So I think as consumption comes back, finally, you can't take it away from our CPGs, you know. But finally, CPGs contribute to almost 30-40%. So forget the big ticket things like IPL and stuff like that, which you know you see because the male audience is uh, premium property, so you see a particular kind of profile of client advertising. But the heart of the uh, advertising business is consumer products and CPGs. And uh, if consumption comes back, you know, at this time the, this time the problem is rural India, but rural is very badly affected. No one knows how badly affected. And rural is where almost 30-40% of FMGs consumption comes. But whenever the revival happens, the Indians are very positive lot. I think Indians are very positive by nature. So the revival may take time this time, but whenever it happens, finally the backbone of our industry is the FMGs and CPGs, food companies and stuff like that. Sir, so, uh, as someone who has uh, spent, you know, more than three decades in this industry, what kind of consumer behavior changes you have seen in last one and a half years? Yeah. So I really do. So it's obvious thing to say that, you know, uh, it's become a lot more uh, digital uh, consumption, which is people, the barriers around digital have reduced, especially digital shopping and e-commerce. So digital consumption, any cases on the rise before, I mean, for any reason, but I think uh, there was a huge barrier to a lot of people's minds on uh, shopping and commerce, and that's gone through. And I think that'll be the big revolution which will happen. Uh, I also feel this is what I alluded to earlier, you know, there was a lot of conspicuous consumption that for the next two years will be moderated, you know, uh, it will not be a good thing to be seen as spending uh, on fancy stuff. So, you know, fancy holidays and this and that. So there will be a certain amount of moderation society will ensure which will happen, you know. And uh, Indians have always been very value conscious. So I think that's not going to go away. In fact, with all this, they become more value conscious. Uh, they always even directly or they want a rationalization for value. 
So even if they're not uh, directly talking of value, they will you know, give a, a logic or a, some story to build around value. That's uh, evergreen, that never go away. But I do think uh, the combination of being careful, uh, not doing consumer consumption and digital e-commerce is a very deadly intersection point. So what it will allow is from the privacy of the home, you know, you can make purchases without others looking at you, evaluating choices and uh, not being seen as flashy. All that can happen. So I think that that's going to be a great. So brands, it's not only about digital alone, that you're getting onto digital uh, commerce, you know. It's not that alone. This is whether a digital platform. It's how you position yourself, you know. If you're mindful, choiceful, if you are... I also alluded to, you know, which I'm seeing for ourselves, and I'm sure it happened to the largest society of stress, mental stress. There's going to be a fair degree of uh, mental trauma. And for mental trauma, finally, it will affect consumers, you know. So if you give them some kind of uh, relief, not escapism, escapism is a negative sign, but if you give them some relief in consumer behavior, you know. So if you make them mindful choices, choices which are uh, empathic, which are choices where you will see some kind of, you know, emotion and those connect. For, for example, like, if you can... Sure, 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 any category. I mean, you know, today, let's take the case of beverages or uh, cell phones, mm -hmm. you know. So in my, my limited perception, cell phones, a lot of them are sold on style, you know, uh, and sold on image. Uh, that may change. So you may still sell it as value, of course, always everyone knows the value of first thing, but, you know, it's being in touch with your loved ones, you know, so the whole story uh, changes uh, in that sense, you know, that moment of truth. So, so the triggers, so the need will remain, the triggers will change. So the triggers no longer, you know, I mean, at least sensible companies will look at triggers which are different. That gives you relief. It's no longer a stress for you. It's no longer, I mean, the whole status style thing will go through a bit of a moderation from market. Sir, so, uh, uh, CAN was uh, cancelled last year. You know, uh, this year we are get, we have it have its first digital version. So, how actively actively do you see agencies participating in the upcoming event? Now, again, in the backdrop of you know what has happened in India in last few months, and this is this requires extra Actually, budget. And uh, more than the budget is also this is the larger point which I made of what's happening around us. Yeah. You know, for consumers to show anything which is I mean I, mean, I know it's online. But yeah. France is France, it's, you know, uh, it's there, uh, France. So it's a bit, in my scheme of things, it's conspicuous. It is in the manner of speaking, you know, the last piece of strong point to make. But then there's but, also some hope, no? Because we're there's, being... yeah, there's learning, there's learning which happens, you know, and there's a lot of stuff which happens. So if they focus on the learning part, I mean, the awards are all about uh, celebration and joy, but also it can be construed as, because, you know, you know, these awards, they're also a lot of integrated for the sake of awards. It's not just awards for the, and it's a global phenomenon, it's not only India phenomenon. So yes, you are right that if you look at it as joy and hope and uh, celebration, but the work is not real, a lot of work is created by advertising, you know. So th this looks very, in my mind, looks very flippant. I mean, one of the reasons why at club uh, and the other why delayed Goa Fest, you could have easily be thought about this doing a online uh, thing. But it will be delayed if we said, listen, this is not the right time because uh, the credit awards particularly, a lot of work on, I'm saying, known for saying things directly and candidly, so I'm saying a lot of work which comes is created work. So one is the physical problem of the work being created, you know, there's a time and people have so many uh, challenges. That's one. But the larger issue is, I mean, you're celebrating work of that kind at a time when, uh, whatever rationale logic we give when the country is going through hell. I personally, I mean, I have nothing against Khans, but it's not our mind for me. It's not, uh, you know, I saw a story the other day saying no Indian shortlist is a big deal. How does it matter? So now that uh, we are anticipating the third wave also, how are you preparing your agency and your clients? So, uh, like I said, you know, we, we, from a personal point of view, I mean, from a health point of view, that's more important. Uh, I think everyone understood the power of precautions. So vaccination is the first precaution we are doing. Like I said, you know, we're encouraging our people to vaccinated, you know, you won't be surprised about the amount of hesitancy on vaccination in this country. I mean, if it's in over India so much, I wonder, wonder what will be happening. In fact, before this meeting, I was just going to call with my child head. I said, you know, uh, the last round of vaccination Bombay is tomorrow. So they give me a report of how many people have uh, got on and how many are refused. And I guess I can personally make a piece to them to come on tomorrow, you know. So I think uh, 
physical safety is very important if vaccination happens even the educated lot i mean they oh, they are surprised to... you're surprised you know i mean they don't say it directly but uh, you'll be surprised at the or maybe they are waiting of... for you know a lot of people i know are waiting for pfizer and Sputnik whatever and so and whatever and... the reasons you know i mean these are these are justifications that finally uh, you know as a point to prove i i held back my vaccination because i said i'll go to the company and get it done so i was ready for the second dose but i said no i'll wait i want to show tell everyone that you know and there myself so i think uh, uh, that is the first important thing in the precautions you don't know when it will happen not happen there's also a lot of misinformation so people don't know what the real story is beyond the point you cannot prepare uh, from a business point of view business is you know we have to take it as it comes uh, so if we come out of this lockdown well you know i mean it's just one month may which is gone by if june things start uh, june is just two weeks but it will start uh, coming back on june then i think we'll be all we know how to handle it you know we've done a reasonable job but like i said i worry not about the third phase i worry about the larger sentiment what the second phase is done i mean i am not getting into the controversy about the real number of deaths is yeah but definitely this time uh, all of us know people close people friends family colleagues who have you know been affected and that will have a lasting impression you know that 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 will take some time to go away so third wave or not that is something and you cannot uh, like i said i am very concerned about mental issues very bothers me so and mental issues not only of our employees also consumers and you know, other people in a particular state of mind they'll be careful so i think that's the larger thing to play for what the government does and it's not about stimulus packages alone and all that's what we find but the larger plan that is which is been ignored so if you have to sum up your resilience story of in last like two years you know what was it that kept you going how did you survive this one and a half years of i think mine crisis? is not a great story many people have done it so i don't know whether they will talk big about something it. that inspires but, youngsters but you but i think i i don't know this order that inspired from me but i think uh, we're a close bonded team you see i think the advantage uh, and this is the time stands like this you realize that we have a lot of people who have worked with the company long i think chances are still peculiar thing because while advertising is young people's business but a lot of our seniors you know uh, if i say middle to senior management have been the company for more than 10 years some of us have been more than 30 years in the same company so the leadership team is very well bonded i mean we work with each other so you know you, you don't you're not second guessing each other people know what to expect they know each other's behavior pattern our clients know us you know fortunately our client relationship is also very long so clients know that you know You know, and I think people have been very. So I think the fact that we have rallied around each other. I mean, my favorite story, uh, if I may, with your permission, tell you the story. Yeah, please. Mm-hmm. Band called Arun Sharma. So you know, there were separate silos. Our digital company attracted me as separate and uh, initiative separate. So I told Arun, Arun is in a way that he had for initiative. I said, Arun, you are responsible for whatever happens for IBG. And so pride. And there's this young girl and interactor. We never met because in a separate office, we never met her. Uh, I think father-in-law uh, needed our oxygen desperately. She was, you know, desperate. So he shouted to us, and because that, you told Arun, you are responsible for this, and he felt a part, and he felt happy. He ran around. He talked to some media friends, twenty kilometers away. This is in the middle of May, you know, tenth May or so, when we were at peak. He got into his car, went to some long place, and got oxygen cylinders. Now, to me, that is a small story, and many people have done it, but it shows that someone is not met, he's not spoken to, not his team, he has no thing. He's gone and done it for them. so i think that shows that people have worked they said you know the fact that arun been long with us and many that our leadership team were together so i think that helped that we are closely bonded we know each other we may not be uh, chaddi buddies at the same but we definitely work each other tightly so you know so that really helped that that, uh, that we could relate to each other this the story completely justifies the intro that i gave that you're also no, thank you for the warm words i'm very embarrassed <laughs> and very embarrassed <laughs> But, this uh, is, I mean, this is generally what is uh, said about you in the industry. Uh, people look up to you for, you know, uh, you. that you've always been very the human side of you, uh, you know, which uh, I don't know how many CEOs have. Oh, well, thanks a lot. So, thank you so much, Shashi sir, thank and uh, this was really you, inspiring and very uh, warm conversation. And I hope uh, people are able to tackle their mental health issues better, and uh, we don't really have to have another uh, interview around the third wave. Uh, next interview should be about uh, you know how we have overcome this. So thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Ajay. Thanks a lot. Thank you.